Hello, everyone. Welcome to this Friday Flash. I'm Lynn Hunsaker with Clear Action Continuum. We're, today, we're talking about AI segmentation speeds growth with guest speaker Dennis DeGregor. This is part of our Smoothing Silos series from the Clear Action Value Exchange. As you can see from this list of silos in business, there's organization and execution silos. And if you think about how you're organizing your customers and uh, managing them through segmentation, personas, and everything else that goes along with it, all of these silos are impacted by the way you're looking at your customer. Dennis DeGregor is going to show us a new methodology to leverage new technologies like AI and blockchain to achieve micro-segmentation and hyper-personalization and move beyond the current state of the art and customer segmentation. And I hope that you'll find some insights today that will help you to smooth these silos. You'll be hearing some really neat and new ideas from Dennis DeGregor, who was an early pioneer and innovator in customer experience. His past corporate roles as the Chief Customer Experience Officer were at Merrill Lynch, Allstate, uh, Hewlett Packard, Bank of America, and he is a author of two books, The Customer Transparent Enterprise and Halos, Competing on AI in the Post-Google Era. Dennis? Thank you, Lynn, for the gracious introduction and greetings to all of our friends across the globe. I hope everyone is staying safe. I know I am. I'm here in my home library, as you can tell by the background, and I'm really excited to talk with all of our colleagues concern with issues around service sales and marketing and, and the 21st century customer journey. So with that, I, I would like to say that having been there from the beginning, so to speak, in, in the segmentation wars and the CX wars, the battle for high value customers, I've seen all types of seg segmentation schemes uh, come and go. As, as everyone knows, some are more effective than others. The state of the art still today as you know, we're decades into the CX battles, still centers around third-party data. And, for, and now it's moving more toward first-party data, data gathered directly from customers. But in my, in my travels, I still see the majority of CMO groups doing segmentation based on a combination of third-party data and whatever behavioral data they can gather and hardwire into their database systems. So the state of the art of segmentation today is a combination of third-party data from, from the various suppliers, you know who they are, and first-party data, data supplied by customers. I'm gonna take us into a new area that I call zero-party data, which is data generated by customers not data supplied by customers. And we'll talk about that difference in a minute. But zero party data is the frontier of innovation on the segmentation horizon. And if we don't adopt zero party data as the foundation of our segmentation strategies, we'll fall behind uh, our competitors and chance being disrupted, which is a real concern uh, among both small, medium and large companies today. So what do I mean by zero party data? Well, considering this, this strategy issue, at Hewlett Packard, we concluded that there is a great opportunity in big data, but big data, as everyone knows, has been overhyped. The issue about big data is it's not valuable or useful to segmentation or to the CMO or service executive unless we distill it from big data to small data using advanced analytical techniques. So what are those advanced analytical techniques? One of the issues that we concluded uh, at HP and in, in the strategy groups there was that there is not one internet. When all of us log on, uh, including today's presentation, and you look at your screen on, on your desktop or your, your phone, you see one internet. But there really isn't one internet. The internet that you see on your screens is really an aggregation of five total internets. And I'll take you through that now. So the graphic on the screen shows that there are really five distinct internets that in the aggregate manifest themselves as one. So if you look at the very top position, 
there's the Internet of Things, which we're all familiar with. It's been promoted. It's been hyped. Everyone talks about it. The Internet of Things are devices, wearables, hardware, beacons, and sensors, things that gather data and transmit data. It's the hardware. Um, it's not the brains. And here's why we developed the HALO methodology. Because if you move around this graphic from uh, right uh, clockwise, you'll see that the next internet is what we call the internet of people. Who are consumers and companies talking to? Who is their social network? What are they saying? What brands are they talking about? The internet of people is really the second internet. Now the third internet, is the internet of places, both virtual and physical. Where are people going? Are they going physically to Starbucks to order uh, coffee? And are they on their phone there using beacons and sensors to transmit and using social media to tell people that they're at Starbucks ordering a double caramel latte? Or are they in a virtual location like Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn? So the bridging of physical, of physical and virtual places is a key element of advancing to 21st century segmentation. Now, the fourth internet is the internet of companies. It's the internet of commerce, brands. What brands are people shopping, gathering information on, and buying from, and remaining loyal to? So that's the fourth internet. And the fifth internet is the internet of information which is the consolidation of all of the information that's being both consumed and generated from activity across the other internets. Now, the fingerprints that consumers and companies leave when they use the global internet to communicate with peers, to go to physical and virtual places, to research and buy from companies, uh, and to generate and consume information. We call those fingerprints digital halos. And whenever a consumer or company accesses the internet, they leave a trail, a fingerprint of activity, which can be uh, retained literally for eternity. And we call those digital halos. So what you see on the screen are the five digital halos. So what we have done with the key HALO methodology is devise a mechanism and a methodology called the key HALO, which takes these five distinct internets and the digital HALOs and fingerprints that are being generated as uh, through internet activity, and we combine them into the master or the key HALO. So we can finally obtain one view of the customer which has been a challenge with data silos, as we all know. We have typically, as marketers and service executives, obtained data that resides in physical data stores that, are, that have grown up in silos, and they don't talk to each other. And so it's almost impossible to get that 360-degree view or golden record of the consumer. The key halo allows this for the first time. So it's truly a breakthrough in micro segmentation and hyper personalization. So uh, in my book, Halos, competing on AI in the post Google era, there are several case studies of several leading Fortune 50 brands who have adopted the key halo methodology and are using the key halo today to achieve competitive advantage in marketing service and selling. So I urge you to take a look uh, if you can. And thank you, Lynn, for showing the, the book cover. And with that, I'm going to turn it back over to Lynn Hunsaker. Have a great day, everybody. I think this is awesome. I'm really excited about these breakthrough ideas and would really recommend everyone to not only get that book, but to learn more in the Clear Action Value Exchange. There's much more similar to this in how to be ready with your data uh, be ready with your organization and to leverage data for heightened customer engagement, uh, re retention and growth, not only in revenue, but uh, profits and market share, uh, customer experience and, and so forth through the methodologies that you've just had to, uh, he just heard about and so many others. In the Clear Action Value Exchange, you can see that there's three overall themes around alignment, uh, accountability, 
and agility, all things that we need now in these new times. Please join the Clear Action Value Exchange today. Thank <laughs> you.